Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today's build will be an updated version of the Bow Mage from Lizard IRL last patch. Now, the Reign of Winter did receive a slight nerf. The chance to proc an Ice Skull was reduced by about 2%, which means that you can still proc a ton of them if you have something that's doing a lot of hits. So we're still going to be using the Flurry and Multi-Shot combo. Lizard's version has Detonating Arrow in it. I won't be running that. Instead, we're dropping Detonating Arrow and we're putting in the Shuriken so that we can get the increased armor. One of the main complaints about the build is while it is super powerful and can do a ton of damage, it's not overly super tanky. So we're trying to add in some more defense. So we're going to stack some armor and try and get about 40 to 50% more damage reduction of physical and about 30% more of the other elements into the build so that it can feel a little bit better in those empowered monoliths. Alright, let's go ahead and get into the skills, the interactions, and just how it all works. For skills, I'm running shurikens, shift, smoke bomb, multi-shot, and flurry. For shurikens, we just have this set up so that when we shift, we'll have a bunch of them proc, and then here that will make them orbit around us. They'll pierce so they won't disappear. They last for a duration, and they give us a percentage increase of armor. So we have three points in alacrity, four points in abrasive arsenal, four points in ethereal blades, one point in thin shurikens, one point in blade shield, so they now cast around us for a duration. 4 points in Floating Blades increases that duration, and 3 points in Bladed Armor means that for each Shuriken spinning around us, we get 30% increased armor, which is going to be a pretty big damage reduction. The base armor versus having this, depending on how much base armor you have, can be anywhere from 10% increased damage reduction up to 40% increased damage reduction. Depends really what you do on your gear and how you decide to spec for it. You can definitely get to 50% plus armor if you go this route and stack armor on your gear, but I have a little bit less dodge. For shift, we have this set up so that we'll gain shurikens when we shift. We'll get haste and we'll get dodge. We got 3 points in shadow recuperation, 5 points in sleight of hand, 4 points in swift recovery, 3 points in momentum, 1 point in shadow slip, and 4 points in elusive that huge amount of dodge rating per point of dex and we have a lot of that on this build. For smoke bomb we have this set up to apply slowed enemies, shred enemies, give you a bunch of dust shrouds and other shrouds so that you will have a little bit more defense and then we make it last as long as possible. So we got one point in thick smoke for the slow, one point in eroding fumes for the armor shred, one point in impending gloom so that the radius will be larger and it will grow faster. One point in Shrouded in Darkness, so that for every two seconds that we are inside of Smoke Bomb, we will get Glancing Blow and Dodge Rating based on how many Shrouds of Dust Shroud we have. And each stack of Dust Shroud will give us 5% more Glancing Blow and 50 more Flat Dodge Rating. So with it, your Dodge Rating will start to skyrocket. With four points in Rapid Concealment, we get it 100% more often. So every second we're in it, we're going to keep getting a stack so you can get four to five stacks of it, which is going to be a lot more glancing blow for 35% damage reduction, as well as a lot more flat dodge, so that you'll dodge a lot more hits. Five points in lingering fumes makes it last as long as possible. Four points in generosity, one point in escape tactics, so you do a backflip when you use it, nice to get out of trouble. One point in enfeeblement for the frailty on enemies that are hit by it, and one point in moonlight bomb for the silver shroud stack. For multi-shot, we're not manually casting this. This will be procced by Flurry, and it will not cost its mana cost because it's procced by Flurry. So make it as expensive as you want. You can go ahead and kill off the attack speed. But again, we're not really doing damage with multi-shot. We just want as many projectiles as as many hits as possible with it so that each one of those hits can proc the icicles from the bow interaction. So we've got two points in quick draw. 2 points in True Strikes, 2 points in Large Quiver for extra arrows, 1 point in Giant Slayer. This is the node you need so that all the projectiles can hit the same target. What this allows for is if you got 12 arrows and they all hit the same target, that's 12 chances for the Icicle to proc, and then the Icicle will come along, do big damage, and hit that same enemy, which is really nice. We got 1 point in Sniping, 1 point in Efficient Draw, 4 points in Boonkin's Points, 1 point in Readied Arrows, Three points in piercing shots. This will definitely give you more of a chance to hit more enemies if the arrows can pierce through and continue on. One point in back to back and two points in repeater bow so that every four shots with multi shot or every time that it's procced four times, it'll do a double shot, which is nice. You can proc that through flurry as well. 
For Flurry, we have this set up so that we're channeling it and we just have crazy attack speed and we're getting mana back on every hit we do so that we can sustain it and be able to use it with 100% uptime depending on how close you are to a target. We got three points in Alacrity, two points in Relentless, two points in Adrenaline Rush, two points in Blood Reverie for the Leech, three points in Second Wind for the Heals, two points in Sap Willpower so that we'll gain two mana as long as Flurry hits one enemy with every arrow. One point in Boundless Blows makes it channeled. Two points in Pavise for the physical and elemental resist while we're channeling. One point in Fuel Solid, which gives us multi-shot on the fourth arrow every time. This increases the channel cost by quite a bit, so it'll start to take your mana down. You offset this by getting a lot of attack speed and getting that plus two mana. It is possible to have 100% uptime of this channel. And then one point in Arrow Storm and one point in Accelerating Impact. For passives, I have 30 points in the Rogue base class with 8 points in Swift Assassin, 8 points in Steady Hand, 4 points in Guile, 5 points in Evasion, 5 points in Agility to finish it off. We have 8 points in the Blade Dancer with all 8 points in Cloak of Shadows for that Glancing Blow and for the Dex. Now remember, we are wearing the unique Morning Frost so that every point of Dex is giving us plus 1 flat damage which is really helpful for the build to put out damage. It also kills off some of our resistance, so I'll show another item you can wear instead of the boots, just a crafted item to not have that problem. You will lose damage, but you'll be more tanky. We got 72 points in the Marksman with eight points in Draining Arrows, eight points in Focus Fire, one point in Assassin's Quiver, five points in Concentration, 10 points in Woundmaker, four points in Meditation, five points in Reflection, five points in Heightened Senses, 6 points in Arrow Storm, 1 point in Covering Fire, 1 point in Barrage of Pain, 10 points in Ethereal Arrows, 2 points in Master Archer, 1 point in Rain of Arrows, and 5 points in Perfect Aim. And I'll go over this again when we go to the training dummy, but the Silver Arrows you can actually snapshot to keep that 60% uptime of the attack speed for more than just the duration of 3 seconds. Alright, for Uniques, Idols, Gear, and Blessings, so this build revolves around the Reign of Winter. This Unique is required for the build to run as it's seen here. While you can run the build without that on just a regular bow, you won't have the Icicles, you won't have that damage, but you will still be able to level up with just Flurry and Multi-Shot. It just won't feel as good as you're seeing in the gameplay here. So until you get this, you can definitely still level the build as is. The other unique is the Morning Frost Boots, which gives us plus one cold damage to attacks and spells per point of dex, which is why we stack so much. Again, this is just going to give us a huge amount of damage boost for it. However, if you don't wear these, you'll still do okay damage with the Icicles, and you can be way more tanky if you don't, because without these, your physical and your cold resist will stay up. You don't have to gear for having that, because it will go more down say you have 70 points of dex you'll have negative 70 percent of those resistances so without it you'll be able to stack increased armor more dodge and then not suffer from having to have extra physical and cold on other pieces of gear for idols you can get chance to shred armor on bow hit you can get increased damage while wielding a bow for the ones you can do some one by threes if you want we have one by ones and one by twos basically just trying to fill in all of those resistances that we weren't able to get on gear then I'm just going to hover over the items. You want increased cold damage and you want as much dex as possible. Don't worry about critical strike chance because you have the ability to apply critical strike vulnerability on hits. So you're just going to within one or two hits on an enemy have 100% crit anyways. And uh, this build planner will be in the description and the written guide as usual. So check it out and feel free to play with it as you please to make it closer to your own. For blessings, nothing is super needed here. You can get critical strike chance, you can get increased cold damage, you can get increased armor, you can get your endurance. There's all sorts of things that you can do. You can also get the ability to shred cold resistance, which will definitely boost the damage of the build a little bit. All right, for the character sheet, you can see we have almost 1,500 health. We are almost capped on resistances. We do get a little bit more when we channel Flurry. You'll see that our elemental and our physical go up a little bit. So we're almost capped on the physical. Our elemental is about 15 to 20% shy. Then for our armor, we only have 14%. I haven't built into a lot of armor on this one, built more into dodge, but you can definitely build armor and with the shurikens when you shift, so we'll shift. You'll see we jump it up right now. We go from 400 armor to 1,000, which means we have 120% 
increased armor gain. So if you can get your base to about a thousand armor, that'll definitely boost it. So if you get uh, your blessings or if on your gear you get a higher base type or add actual added flat damage or have some more increased on there as well. Say you take off the boots and put increased and flat armor on your boots because you could craft. You can easily get that to about 2,400 armor and you'll get about 50% damage reduction which will definitely help you feel less squishy in the end game. For damages you can see we have 600% cold damage. A big portion of that comes from the relic where we have just over 100%. We also have idols that give us increased global damage so all these types are increased. And then for our critical strike multiplier we're at about 250%. For defense you'll see we're just 1% shy on this build for critical strike avoidance. Still working on that. And then if I could get my endurance up to 60%, I would feel less squishy as well. Overall, though, it still does not power just fine. You just want to make sure that you keep moving. All right, so for how to play the build and the skill rotation, on this one, you don't have to have shurikens and you don't have to have multi-shot on the bar. So I threw an unspec decoy on there and then there was nothing else that I wanted to use. But you can throw on a decoy if you're really getting into some trouble. But basically, you're just going to use Flurry, and you're going to try and get into the face of all your monsters to be able to hit them with as many of those multi-shot projectiles as possible. The closer you are, as you can see, if I get right on top of this guy, my mana will not go down. We actually stay at full mana because of how many hits we're getting with our attack speed. Now, one of the snapshotting things you could do is inside of your passives, you have the arrow storm where once every 10 seconds you get 60 percent increased attack speed for three seconds when you proc it well you can kind of snapshot that by simply using an attack for once and then it's active and then you can keep it the whole time and now i am getting even more mana back because i'm attacking even faster and as long as i don't stop channeling for 10 seconds i keep it the whole time now once you lose it, you'd have to wait, and you'd have to wait till that 10 seconds is up, but then you can proc it again and go ahead and have that buff again. Really nice for single target damage, especially bosses, for doing just a little bit extra damage, as 60% attack speed is a lot, and yes, attack speed does affect how fast the arrows come out, even though we are channeling. It's not a full 60%, it's formulated out, but it is a boost to the build. Alright, that's going to be it for this build guide. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, not much has changed since the last patch. You can still run Lizards from the last patch. It's on his channel if you want to run exactly what he had. But people were asking for an updated version. I changed it a little bit. We dropped detonating arrows since for me, I just don't run it anyways. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. As always, stay safe and enjoy some gameplay.